Hey guys and girls, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's me, man, on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, and this time we're going back to Torolf's path. I completely forgot that Torolf and Jorgen both had an update, uh, the same up in the same update. So I've been skipping on Dawn Chorus content, y'all. I apologize, but anyway, let's jump right back in, shall we? Alarm, Shan, you are up, and let's go. All right. Then his tongue slips inside, and he kisses me gently. My mind goes blank. Any thoughts I had, they're pushed out by this overwhelming sensation. A blinding explosion happening in slow motion. I'm being held in someone's arms and kissed. His warm breath mingles with mine, and he lets out a deeper rumble, saturated with hunger and lust. He's patient, though, and he takes his time, waiting for me to kiss him back. Ooh. Ah, uh, which one is better? Whoa. Take the lead. Ah. Uh, uh. Well, my paws find their way into his shirt, groping his pecs, coaxing another hungry rumble from him. Fuck, he's so gosh darn... <laughs> he's so gosh darn hot and, he hot and he knows it. I push back against his lips, tasting him. He opens them up for me, letting me take control and kiss him back, my tongue brushing against his. He tastes like clear spring water, slightly sweet. A moan muffled by my snout escapes Torf as I probe deeper, exploring his maw. It feels so warm, warm and soft. Torf breaks the kiss, wiping his snout and chuckling. Damn, Garvin, you're a sloppy kisser, but you certainly don't hold back. I don't reply, but press my shout against Torolf again, and I'll, inter and I'll interrupt him with another kiss. I don't want to stop. He moans, taken by surprise, and leans into the kiss with a bit more initiative this time. It's ecstatic, indescribable. I can feel fireworks going off in my head, an explosion of colors raising my fur on my arms. Focus on his lower edge of his t-shirt first, okay. The lower edge of his tank top materializes under my paws, which I curl up around it almost instantly. I pull up, revealing a soft cream-colored belly following the, ro following the rolling fabric with my eyes. The tiger's pecs bulge from his chest like two hills, wide and sturdy. The fabric brushes over his nipples, two dark spots topping those muscular hills. He raises his arms, allowing me to pull the tank top over his head. As soon as I'm done, I toss the garment to the side and run my fingers through his fur. There he is in his full glory, sitting on my bed. Really, how lucky can I be? I take a deeper breath. His own scent is stronger now, almost overpowering his cologne. It radiates directly from him, prompting wild, primal thoughts. The closer, the more of him there is. My snout bumps against his chest as I fail to perceive how it goes, how it got there, but I don't care. Right now my mind is occupied with something else. I breathe in, deeply, slowly, and again taking as much of Torolf into my lungs as I can. My arm wraps around his chest and up his shoulder, making sure that I've got a good grip on him. I draw him even closer. My nose is buried deep inside the thick, dense chest fur. It smells of pure arousal, like a fresh, erotic energy, hypnotizing and invigorating. I let my snout wander up and down, exploring the valley between his pecs, making sure I do not miss a single spot. The tiger says something above, but it hardly reaches my muffled consciousness. This overwhelming drive steers me exploring sideways, making my needy mouth climb up the tense muscle. Exposed skin brushes against my lips, and my tongue slides out, giving it a timid lick. Torolf's enthusiastic gasp piques my curiosity, and I drag my tongue across his nipples again, prompting the same reaction. Emboldened, I rotate my head and suck on it. Torf moans and I go harder, suckling and licking on the tender flesh. Suddenly, I feel a paw grabbing my snout from below and forcing me up. <laughs> the tiger leans forward, smiling smugly. You know how to rile me up, kid. Now come on, stand up. You have way too much clothes on yourself. Oh my. Yep, that's gonna get edited. He caresses my cheek gently before standing up himself and taking off his trousers, tossing them to the side. I sit on the bed, just admiring him, as he... And as he undresses down to his underwear, barely able to contain his erect, yeah, thingy, bulging outwards obscenely. Gods, how can this guy be so hot? Hey, you need help with that? I don't reply, still staring at him and blushing. What, cat got your tongue? Very well. He steps up to me and grabs the hem of my shirt with both paws tickling my sides. Lift your arms. I do as I'm told, and Torf lifts my shirt and takes it off of me, tossing it to the floor beside us, then takes a step back and looks at me. You have no idea how cute you look right now. Then his eyes travel downwards. Damn, kid, that really riled you up. He points at my groin, tented over my stiff member. There's a wet spot at the tip. I leak so much pre it soaked through my trousers. Fuck! I hope I packed a spare. I didn't know that's even possible. It sounds like something out of a porno. But how about we take it a bit further? Kissing and licking is nice, but we're still ahead of the main course. I gulp, and I thought it was going in this direction. 
and it makes me both nervous and excited. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm not that old. So, right, sorry. Maybe I got a bit too much into it when he called me kid. I wasn't actively thinking of the age difference between us. I don't even notice it most of the time, but it was kind of hot. They have someone more experienced to learn from and to show you things. It sounds nice. I finish undressing, kicking off my trousers to the pile of our clothes on the floor. Torolf, in the meantime, hops onto the bed, leaning back on his arms. Can you fetch the lube from my bag? It should be at the top. Lube. Right, I didn't really think about it. Of course, I used it for toys, but I didn't really consider the logistics of anal sex before. It is indeed lying on top of a towel inside the bag. A half-empty transparent bottle. Now come here. I don't need you... I don't think you need any more foreplay. Your thingy looks like it's about to rip a hole in your boxers. Oh my. Do you have a rubber? I don't think... I didn't think I... Don't worry about that. I'm on prep. Oh, that's... I guess it's fine then? I don't really know much about this stuff, but he seems to be sure of what he's saying. So lube yourself up and come fuck me, you feline beast. Whoa, what? Huh? What? Fuck him? Oh. That's... Neat. It's... I nod to step towards the bed, using my free hand to slide down my pants that... My, uh, rooster springs out, almost splashing troll for free, Jesus. It still seems weird to me that he's so kind of unconcerned about using no protection. Though, this being my first time, it's not like there's any risks. Can I catch something this way? I have no idea, but then Torolf wouldn't want me to play with him raw if he knew he had something, right? <sighs> Hell, I'm too horny to think straight about it. Nothing about, me, nothing about me feels straight at the moment. In front of me lies the hottest tiger I've seen. His bulging thingy throbbing in the cold air as he devours me with his eyes. Every fiber of my being vibrates with anticipation, like a stunt, like a strong bow, ready to shoot. Come on, be a big, be a good boy and make me feel good. The tiger moves even further up, making his ass, oh my god, and showing off the thinning of his light fur. Cheeks can only get this hot. There's nothing holding me back as I stare into, what are you waiting for, huh? I approach him, taking the view in. As, as a passing thought, it clear as a shard of ice flashes through my head. This all feels so oddly real and so ordinary. It's not like a scene from a film, it's not a sensual photo shoot, but it's certainly not porn directed and calculated. Before me lies the same tiger I got to know through chats and cuddles for the last two days, naked and waiting. No music playing in the background, no cinematic filter, just him and me, my anticipation, his hunger, and the sexual tension between us. I grab Torolf by his calves and pull them higher. He gasps, losing support and falling flat on his mattress. I remember press- oh my god, yep, ah, uh, yo, good lord. I press, feeling some resistance at first, but he quickly opens up for me. I push forwards, and surely the heat of Torolf's insides embraces me. It feels... huh. Oddly, it doesn't feel like much. Torolf's soul is tight around the halfway point, but it's not a warm, velvety, smooth sensation I expected. Still, the sight alone is enough to make me feel like I'm hovering above the ground. Come on, fuck me up. You don't have to hold back. He's still acting smugly, but it's me who's... yeah. Oh my god. Jesus. I press forward, impaling him, until I bought him out. Was, uh, yeah, mm. Oh my god. Oh, fuck yes, Carvin. Fill me up. His voice comes out raspy, my own name sounding strangely unfamiliar. But I barely register that. That, gyrating my hips, driving it in and out. Yep. The bed creaks when my mass shifts forwards as I lean over him, over him to get a better angle. He grunts and tries to say something, but his voice becomes a prolonged moan. Feels good to shut him up. My body reacts by itself, intensifying my moves. In turn, turning Trollf into a whining mess. I give in to a carnal desire. Out. In. Out. In. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I didn't expect it to get heated this quick. The rhythm hypnotizes me, prompting to accelerate. The room fills with Torolf's needy... The Torolf's needy groans and, and my short grunts. The room fills with troll. Okay. Fuck. Fuck. I hope no one can hear us. Not that I would care about it much now. This feels alien. Strange, but good. This is so good. I lift his leg, I lift his leg a bit higher, turning him around a bit and slam back in. Oh, fuck. The final push, I force the entire length inside of him and, yep. It's like a blinding light, like staring into the sun, colors swirling before my eyes. A tide washing over me, sparks of pleasure wandering up my nerves, throughout my whole body. It's not like any orgasm I've had before. Oh, Jesus. Well, that whole scene is getting edited. A long, raspy moan escapes my snout. My knees go weak under me, and I hold on to the tiger, my paws gripping his thighs. Torolf's belly's painted with his own, uh, uh frosting. 
And he's still whining, softly stroking his... Yeah. I didn't even notice when he came. My ears ring. A long, raspy moan escapes my snout. My knees go weak under me. Pant after pant, I lean against Torolf, trying not to lose balance. In. Out. In. My breathing slowly goes back to normal. My heart rate decreases. Then I slowly slide myself out of him, and I stream of, uh, stream of my stuff. Oh my goodness. My head starts spinning when I try to straighten up. I feel as if I just had finished a marathon. Huh. Wow, you worked up quite a sweat. Want to lie down? Enough space for both of us here. I... Phew. I think I need a moment. With an unsteady gait, I cross the room to the bathroom, slamming the door shut behind me. The sink supports my weight. My semi-hard thing hangs between my legs, dripping, yeah, with lube on the floor. I look at the white splotch on the cream-colored tile, then another appearing next to it. My thoughts gain a sudden clarity to them. Oh. What the hell have I done? Having my first time with a near stranger without any protection on top of that? I picture Torolf in my head. I don't feel anything towards him. And now that I, I, sat, now that I satisfied my physical needs, only a deeply unpleasant void remains. Somewhere deep inside me. I curl up, feeling it consume me. Fuck. Oh, yeah. I can't go back there to him. I don't want to see him right now. I can't ever look into his face again. I can't ever look into my face again. I'm disgusting. It didn't feel the way I thought it would. There was just this physical, primal pleasure, but it felt as if I was detached from it, standing between, standing beside my body. I feel so hollow. My dick is sore. Can I catch something this way? Yes. I don't know. I have no idea. How could I even know? I need to check that on the internet. The first thing I'm about to do when I leave. I, can I get STDs from Anal Sex as a top? Yes. I can't. I, I can't catch anything. What the hell was I even thinking? What was this for? Was it worth it? I think I'm hyperventilating. I put a paw to my chest, feeling it rising and falling fast. Gradually, slowly, I slow down my breathing. Everything is fine. I have to go back and look normal. Unconcerned. I can't let Torolf see me like this. How do I do that? Damn, Carvin. The room feels human and oddly silent, and it reeks of, yeah, it reeks of, it reeks of after, afterwards, yep. My own, too. Torolf is lying on the bed, motionless, his paw covering, covering his eyes. His chest rises and falls in a steady rhythm, dripping with, yep. Step by step, I get closer to him, but as I stand by the bedside, he remains motionless, sleeping. Laying here on the bed, he looks so shamelessly erotic and somehow even more handsome. Somewhere at the back of my head passes an involuntary thought. It would make such a great photo if only I could take it. A self-member rests in the hollow between the thigh and the hip, and the hip, fur sticking to it. Yep, the stuff drips from his body to the bedding below, clumping the fur and making it stick to his body. As I calm down, it slowly comes back to me. Why I am here, in his room at his side. He's not a near stranger. We don't know each other well, but it doesn't mean anything. I feel close to him. And now we got even closer. He's done a lot for me. He found me and extended a paw towards me. He invited me into his life and into here. I have no idea what came over me. He's all wet and... but so am I, but why should I care? I lie down on the bed, snuggling up to him. Hmm. Hey there. I think I drifted off for a moment. Sorry. Had fun? Oh, I did. Thank you. Torf turns to his side and snuggles me into himself. Oh. Oh, wet torso is pressing together. Shouldn't we take a shower or go wipe ourselves? Oh, I'm getting, uh, oh, I'm not getting up today anymore. That's kind of gross. But truth be told, I don't really want to leave the bed, bed now, either. Do you like it? You're not bad. You could use some practice, though. I think you lasted, like, five minutes. I pressed my head to Torl's forearm, hiding my stout embarrassment. That doesn't sound too impressive, indeed. I'll get better. Still, it was nice. Not bad for the first time. Are you staying here or heading back to your room for the night? Can I stay here? Sure. Mm-hmm. I had like that very much. His paws on my snout suddenly, soft pads running along its length, patting me gently. A rumble arises in my chest, and I close my eyes, leaning into his touch. This is right where I want to be. I feel at peace. Everything is as it should be. I'm here with Torolf, snuggled into him, spent and happy. I grab his paw and hold it to my face, feeling its warmth. I need him. And he's enough. Being by his side, I am the happiest person on the planet. So I hold on to him. And he holds me back. I have found my happy place. Reality clashed with the dream, breaking the laws of physics. 
Centuries collided, matter condensed and annihilated itself, and the universe finally collapsed under the weight of its own absurdity. Whoa. And then it was summer again. Children playing, people laughing, the world was in bloom. We sat on the porch on the back of my house and watched the day go by, sun bleeding out onto the canvas of the bluest sky. Your head is on my lap already, and my paw's on your head. We sleep in the garden, the pet and the owner. Guess who's who? There's a person I keep seeing in my dream. He has the same stripes as me, but he looks younger by ten years or so. I want to tell him to look out for himself, but I can't do anything. He just never listens. I don't want him to repeat my mistakes. The surface breaks. The center cannot hold. I need to know, is it too late for me? Is it ever too late for anyone? Wow, this is getting really bizarre. I got a lot of editing to do on this episode, y'all. <laughs> Holy shit. Yep. That was a short one, but... Ooh, it was uh, action-packed, I'll say. All right, y'all. Ooh, I guess that's it for Toro for now. I hope we get more Dawn Chorus updates soon. I love this game so damn much. All right, anyway, y'all, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks. Your tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.